so uh, my name is Alex Todd. Um, so there, there are two billion, there are like more than two billion uh, financially excluded people in the world, largely because they don't have sufficient formal credentials uh, that are needed by schools, by employers, by landlords, creditors, and insurers. And there's nothing equivalent to a, a credit score that will help identify those that are trust, the trustworthy invisible. So my company, Reliably Me, uh, is developing a social credit system uh, that will help uh, organizations recognize people for their good character. So that's kind of the introduction. So if this is ready, I'll walk you through it. Or just, or, or, or bad character. We have a, yes, but, <laughs> but in, the, yes, in the spirit of or what we're trying to do is have individuals control their own identity, we want people to be able to highlight their good character and perhaps not show their bad character. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so there is, um, you know, there are like 40, uh, 45 million, um, just, just in, the, in the States, there are 45 million people who have unusable uh, 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 credit scores. They're not, they're not strong enough to be used. And uh, it, that's adults. If you add students as well, people between 18 and 24, that goes up to 70 million people. That's 21% of the entire population of the states would fall into that category. If you take that globally, uh, actually the number is like 40% of the people in the world. That's a huge numbers of people. And a lot of organizations are using um, credit scores for applications that are really not, uh, where credit scores are really a blunt instrument for what it is they're trying to adjudicate in terms of risk. So, um, so, that's, so that's an issue. Uh, credit scores are uh, really not an appropriate uh, way of assessing a person's character for applications other than for institutional credit. So this is um, a different presentation. It's okay. This is a version of the presentation. Um, in any event, so today, um, just give me a sec. Okay, um, so, so today what we're doing is, there's another slide that was supposed to be here, so I just wonder if anything else has changed, so just. Um, in any event, today you're gonna have an opportunity. So okay, so first of all, uh, there's some slides missing, so I'm trying to catch up on what's missing. The first thing is that uh, we're actually, right now, uh, we are um, using Facebook Messenger uh, to allow organizations uh, to, to issue uh, um, digital badges to individuals and a, and a reliability record on a blockchain to individuals uh, who, full, uh, who follow through on their commitments to volunteer or attend events. So this is how we're starting off, to actually start recognizing people for, for their reliability. And, um, and, by, and so their social credit that we're creating is actually a combination of all the badges that they've earned and the reliability record on the, on the, on the blockchain. That means that, re, that track record of fulfilling those commitments. Now today, you're gonna have an opportunity to actually uh, earn your own first social credit on a blockchain if you make a commitment to ask me a question at the end of my presentation. And the way you can do that is you can go to this webpage, which is countmeinclub forward slash TOTA day, and that URL is gonna be available on most slides at the bottom of it. So you get, when you get the inspiration, you can actually go there and register your commitment to ask me a question. And then when you do ask me a question, you will receive your digital badge and you'll receive um, a reliability record on a blockchain. So an IOU is a promise, and you can make any kind of promise. You can make promises come in all shapes and uh, sizes, anything from a, a promise to pay somebody back, which is a loan, to somebody, if somebody buys you a beer to reciprocate, buy them, to buy them a beer next time. And really, they can be coming, they can make a register from any application, anything from a calendar invitation all the way to a project management application. So there are a very wide variety of kinds of promises that could be made. Now, more formal promises are like contracts and uh, loans and uh, even uh, securities, like, uh, for example, um, um, uh, for example, um, a bond is, is, is a security. It's a much more formal kind of uh, 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 promise. But when you take a look at money, look, for few people re really understand that that is also a form of promise. When money, the generating fiat money, the U.S. dollar, is actually backed by a promise by the, um, um, by the, uh, by the Federal Reserve. And in fact, the Federal Reserve 
um, is lending that money to both the government and the banks. So it's, that money is actually based on a promise. The foundation for it is the promise that, that um, the, uh, the government and the uh, banks are going to pay it back. Now, what's interesting about that is that as I was studying money, I came to the realization that these promises, these promise-based relationships, uh, are actually relationships. They're anticipating that there will be an ongoing relationship between these institutions. And then when you borrow money from the bank, bank that's actually another kind of relationship that you're maintaining with the bank. But the interesting thing is, there's no system in place to support relationships between you and me, human beings, individuals. Our transaction, our, the way, only way we can do it is through a transaction of settling right away by paying somebody. We can't act, there's no system to allow us to manage a debt relationship between each other. So something really struck me as unusual that a system is designed to facilitate relationships with legal persons, but not between real human people, human persons. So there's something wrong with that. So imagine if, um, if you could, imagine if you could trust people's promises, just at face value. And then imagine more than that, that you could actually trust the promise that somebody received somebody from somebody you've never heard of, and that then you feel confident enough that you can actually accept that promise, in other words, have it transferred to you and rely on it, even though you've never heard of the person who originally issued the promise. Imagine if you could do that. So our system is designed to get people in, in, um, in a behavior, in a ritual, of making promises and fulfilling promises on a regular basis in order to consistently be able to uh, work on building up our social credit to the point where their promises have more and more value. And so they can increase the value of those promises over time. Does that make sense? If you think about a central bank is highly trusted, therefore they can issue our currency. If somebody has a high social credit profile, their promises can be trusted. The higher the profile, the more trust of the promise and the more value it has. So imagine then if that promise can now circulate in the economy. So I, re so I receive a, a promise from somebody else and I can actually use that as currency if I want to buy something. And that person doesn't need whatever that promise is promising. It could be promising me a jacket or something. And then they can trade, uh, or it could be money, it doesn't matter. Whatever it is, they may not call that person on that, uh, call that promise and they could transfer it. And eventually, somebody will call, it on, uh, uh, call an original promiser on that promise and settle it. Imagine if you could do that. Suddenly, we as individuals, if we're highly trusted, can actually be issuing our own currency. So let's take a look at an example of uh, how this type of concept actually works in the real world. In the real world, imagine a scenario where, and which is a real scenario, that um, Smith in this diagram actually is borrowed money from Maxwell. And Maxwell is not going to collect that money. He's actually going to give it to Kawaja. And Kawaja is, in turn, going to take that debt and collect it from Smith. I mean, that's a, what a collector does, a debt collector does. But now look at the same scenario and say, OK, so in a trade finance situation. So now you have, let's say that uh, Smith is Maxwell's customer. And uh, Kawaja is a supplier to Maxwell. So in other words, Maxwell gets his money from Smith in order to buy supplies from Maxwell. But Smith takes 30 to 60 days to pay, for, pay, uh, pay his invoices, so Maxwell's short on cash. So he could take his receivables and transfer them to Kawaja and say, okay, you could, you could have my receivables as, uh, as, as payment. And either Ma Kawaja can go and collect it directly based on invoices from uh, Smith, or um, or just hold it as, as collateral. So that's a real, those are real world examples. That's trade finance, right? So, so we can actually do that for any kind of loan promise as well. And the social credit, could, uh, that, that promise, this promissory note that circulates around is transferred from person to person to person can vary in value depending on the issuer's uh, social credit. As the social credit goes up or down. If it goes down, the value of that, of that promise will go down. If the value, if the social credit go, of the individual goes up, the value of that promise will go up and have more purchasing power. 
There are some slides missing here, I think. This is a very old version of the presentation. <laughs> um, and so, um, so we're using the Toto network, uh, in essence, because it's a very, very efficient way of having authenticity of the original IOU that's coming. And, um, and it's also, um, you know, it's, 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 it guarantees the value that's, that's being transferred, and it also can uh, guarantee the settlement of the transaction because it's uh, basically tokenizing that promise. So that, to that promise can now travel as a token and be transferred like a, po like a token th throughout the economy, like a currency. So in order to make this work, it's not just having a strong protocol, but you also need some services wrapped around that. So you need to mitigate the risk. So you have, in mitigating the risk, for example, you want to reduce the probability that something will go wrong and you won't, you won't get paid or that won't get settled. And you also then want to reduce um, the impact when that happens. And so our um, Reliably Me, uh, with a social credit profile, reduces the probability that, that something will go wrong, whereas an insurance system that, such as uh, Toda Q has will actually re reduce the impact if something were to go wrong and it doesn't get settled. And then the other very important component of this is needs to be a liquidity. So you need a market where people can buy, sell um, um, uh, these, these, uh, these um, uh, promissory notes. And, uh, and so, in effect, these promissory notes um, are exchangeable, so you have to do the discovery process. And, uh, that, and as I said earlier, the price in the market, the exchange for what we call credit money, can happen dynamically as the person's social credit goes up and down. So that, that system will be powered by Reliably Me. So we're starting off, obviously, uh, because we're just starting off, we're early on, we have, we're in an MVP situation. We've had, we have about 200 users, about, we've done about a, a, a dozen pilots so far. Uh, it's going to take a while be before these institutions start to accept social credit as being something they'll use. So we can't start there. We have to build it up and demonstrate the value of it with, with low-value low transactions. So what we're doing first is we're using uh, events. We're actually having people who attend events commit to, to, to attending the event or volunteering at the event. And when they do that, they fulfill that commitment. Uh, that they're, they're, they build up their social credit. Now, the events, in turn, when they see that somebody has a good social credit, can allow them to give them a discount or allow them to go to the event for free because they know they're going to show up. So suddenly, at that point, it's actually starting to become a little bit like a currency. It has value. Oh, if I have a good social credit, I can get in for free. So that would be the starting point. And our focus is going to be students and universities. So at that point, it'll, you know, students can use it for various clubs where they're trying to get in, at, get executive positions with various clubs and the unions and so on. Before we build it up to uh, some employ their employment opportunities as they graduate. So in terms of the business problems we're solving, we're starting off uh, with branding. The Badgers Act as a digital branding platform that is shareable in social media. So we're really supporting uh, companies who want to demonstrate their brand extension. So by issuing badges that they brand that are related to a social cause that, um, that they're trying to promote, that it's a part of their brand extension. It could be the environment, uh, whatever it is, right? So that's our, and that'll allow us to create awareness and initial adoption because the brands will want to reach, reach out to a lot of people who are uh, who identify with that, uh, with that brand extension. Then we're going to be, be uh, getting involved in the performance tracking engagement at the enterprise level, whereby employers will track the performance of employees and reward them for their performance, and um, uh, from that side of things. And then eventually we'll build up to the point where actually we allow organizations to use that information for recruiting purposes or for, uh, um, uh, for credit, for insurance, and so on. Uh, in, corporations, for example, would use it for to reduce their insurance premiums, a lot, like health and health and uh, benefits insurance premiums, because if they can, if the individuals can demonstrate their commitment to good health and fitness, then they de then will the risk of the employee um, um, getting sick uh, is is less. So, for that kind of thing. So our business model is very similar to a loyalty points company. The only difference between us and a loyalty points company, such as Air Miles, a consortium loyalty points company, is that uh, our customers, instead of issuing um, points, they issue branded digital badges. 
That's the only difference. So customers pay us for the badges, and then they, these, they're, they're their badges, they issue them, they're branded, they get, they get recognition for having done that. Um, and then of course, there's the whole data play after that, just like any loyalty points company, then that data can be used for actionable insights, and also, um, it can also be used to help individuals demonstrate their social credit, their uh, good character, uh, to employers, creditors, as I talked about before. So we're actually, um, we're really excited about the idea that the United Nations have their sustainable development goals that, they're, um, that every country has signed up to it. Every, not only governments, but also large orga larger organizations are gonna have to report on their contribution to those 17 sustainable development goals. And what we're hoping to do is be able to support that by getting, allowing companies to issue their own branded badges in support of the, so, uh, the UN SDGs that they're supporting. By engaging people in activities that support those things, earning those badges, then have those roll up to the UN SDGs, those roll up then to the government level, and then the country level, and then uh, report into the United Nations. And we see that that's going to be a huge wave that's going to be happening. In fact, it's so big that by one estimate, uh, it'll be a $2.1 trillion revenue opportunity for technology companies to support the UN SDGs by 2030. So we're kind of in, cust we're in customer development mode, talking to a lot of companies. Um, and um, and the most, most notable right now, I think, of most interest is TransUnion, for example. I spoke with the president of TransUnion Canada. They were really excited about this because this will allow them to identify what they call a credit invisible. And uh, they'd be interested in partnering with us, with us if we can show them a path to 5 million Canadians. Now, we th uh, that, that's one of the reasons that we're going, are going to focusing on students because students are the biggest opportunity. They're the people who don't have sufficient formal credentials. They're trying to prove themselves, demonstrate their, uh, their worth to employers and others. And uh, so that's, that's going to be our path. The other thing that was interesting is Intact Foundation shortlisted us for their very first impact investment. And uh, based on our proposal to alleviate the root causes of child poverty. And so that's so huge. That could, if we could do something like that, that would be a huge impact. So uh, we, uh, you have an opportunity to earn your own uh, blockchain enthusiast badge branded by TOTA, TOTA Network, and if you, um, if you ask me a question, and you've already registered your commitment to do so, and uh, right now, just, these are a little bit out of order, because it's not, again, but anyway, we're, we're actually, uh, we don't have the social credit profile developed to look with all the badges yet, but that's what we're working on right now. What you will, you will end up seeing is a reliability record uh, trans, of, of all your hashtag transactions for right now. Yes, Sasha. I have a question. Okay. I I did, you, did you? Uh, well, let, me, let yeah. Okay. Alex, will you forgive me for exporting the wrong set of slides? <laughs> you, have to make it up. you will have to make it up to me. It's a valid answer. <laughs> yes. I have a question. Um, I registered uh, did you? Tony Rose. Okay, so you have to give me your name so I can, so I can find you, okay? Tony Rose. Tony Rose? Okay. Is the badge that you will issue me for asking a question uh, a cryptographic token? Right. So the, the badge that um, I'm just looking for you right here. Um, the badge that we're issuing right now is not, but it will be. It's going to be a non fungible token, and it's perfect, perfect, really well suited to the Twitter network. Is it going to be like in version of Well, it'll be a total version of that, yes. That's correct. Yes. And in fact, um, right now we're just doing, um, we're just, we are using Ethereum uh, here in Testnet, and uh, we're using ledger entries. But uh, well, I think with Toda, what we can do is we can actually replace the ledger with a token. So imagine a promise now to attend the event is a, is a, is a token that you generate and you pass it to the event organizer. And then when you attend, the token just gets passed to you. Now that, that, that entire transaction is stored in your in your wallet, total wallet, right? So it's, that becomes atomic. That, the unit, that that unit carries the transactions with it, right, Dan? That's right. Okay. So and so that's so that's how uh, we're thinking. We can actually sit. We can actually have. There's an alternate. It's, it's a different way of thinking about it. 
but actually it's a very efficient, maybe actually a much better way to do it than the ledger approach that we're currently using. So we're investigating that. I, I didn't, I, what is your name again? Tony Williams. Tony, and you registered? I did. Okay, I'll get you your, your uh, the uh, messenger app. Yeah, let me just, um, let me just find it. Next question. Um, I have a question. Yes. Uh, I need a register. Yeah, that's uh, if you can just go back to three, four slides uh, to the United Nations goals. Yep. <clears throat> you said that all countries have signed up for this. Are you sure that Trump's not pulling out of this or as well? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. Uh, I, I really like your idea. It's fantastic to incentivize people, especially the young generation, to do the, the right thing. Like you said at the beginning, it's a great idea. And, uh, I think, uh, I see a little bit of synergies with uh, who knows. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah so I, I think there's a lot of synergies. Uh, yeah. I was really excited by the, all the presentations today because I could just see like how we could uh, we could all, all kind of work together. And, uh, yeah. The, the, um, yeah. So yes, there's a lot of synergies, and I, I so I think I, I kudos to two two feet, quite frankly, because I'm really impressed by the the range the of of. Uh, prospective partners, uh, joint venture partners, that he's put together because they're very complementary and synergistic and I'm really hoping that we'll be able to collaborate and work together. Fantastic. Thanks, Gary. Thank you. Thank you.